So first one I want to go through is my uh, 18 inch S-Wing camper's axe, five inch blade on it. I won't go into any more detail on it. Uh, you can find the details on uh, my five tools um, video that's on my blog. Check it out, rawskillsbushcraft.com. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do before I start chopping wood, I'm gonna check around my immediate area. I got Duncan here. Duncan, go ahead, move, go play, go play, go play, go play. Take the stick, go. Duncan, go, 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 go play, go, <laughs> go, go get it. So I get him out of the way. <laughs> and also, uh, look around, make sure I've got a good, safe 360 degree area around me. That is just to make sure nobody's gonna come up on you and accidentally get caught with the ax. Also, if you're using a wooden handled ax, there is also the potential of the ax head falling off or flying off just as you're coming down. So you could hit somebody with that ax head. So to uh, mitigate that risk, you make sure you tell everyone you're chopping wood and to stay from in front and behind you especially. So this is the first, first method I'm gonna show you. It is gonna be the kneading down method using a shorter ax. Uh, it, is, it is a lot safer to be kneeling down, to be honest. Standing up, which I'll show you in a bit, uh, you're gonna be coming down, and there's a lot of room for error. Coming either side, you can go into your foot. I've done that once. Uh, yeah, and you can do a lot of other damage just coming into that. So, if you're using a shorter ax, I would recommend going down on your knees. Especially if you have a short chopping, a small chopping block too. The chopping for splitting wood also. with the, the, the bigger of my axes. And that's my S-Wing axe. So, what I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm kneeling down right now because I have a, a small chopping block. And I have the log on its side. And as you can see the placement there, it's placed right at the end of the log there. And I'm basically going to come down, I'm going to hit it right on the edge as you can see, and that's gonna cause a split right down this wood. Now this is a hardwood, this is ironwood, so we'll see how she splits. As you can see, a pretty solid wood there. Go again. That was a better split. There you go. So I'm a lefty, so should be placing these slightly more to the left. See now I've got this, this has happened where it's got stuck in there, hasn't quite split. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move move the wood around and then, ooh, okay, if it would, would cooperate with me, put that back in there. Okay, I'm gonna move the wood around. I'm just gonna tap it down on the log, splitting it. And that's one nice piece of firewood for me. Next one. Another piece, as you can see, it's pretty hard wood, so. And I can just keep doing that, splitting that. Another means of splitting, of course, is a typical stand-up method. And again, I'm gonna just crouch down for this method, just to keep it nice and safe. Um, if you do have a higher chopping block, you can stand up and chop onto that. But of course, beware, I've had it happen to me. If you do glance off, to, particularly with this ax here, seeing how narrow the actual split, uh, split in uh, wedge is, it does have a tendency to ping off in a certain direction. And I have actually had it before. I wasn't drunk, honestly, when I was chopping with the wood, chopping the wood. Um, where it can actually ping off and actually come into your shin, into your foot, as it did with me, etc, <clears throat> etc. Et so you get the gist. So you use the method that is best for whatever you're chopping on. Try not to chop on, on stone because if you miss, you're going to damage your axe and you're going to put chips in your axe. And you want, that's one tool you want to really look after. So this is the second method. 
of chopping and that's just your typical lumberjack chopping on a log on a log method so we're going to come down on this and there you go straight through beautifully and that's how that one's done so that is chopping with this axe of course the axe is more to use so you can use it to if you choke it, you're going to this is called choking your axe. You can use it to make feather sticks. If you axe, keep your axe sharp enough, you can use it to make feather sticks. Like so. You can use it there, you can use it if you're gonna make spoons and stuff or utensils, use it to carve with. Of course, keeping your hand away from the where you're doing it. And of course, you're gonna angle the piece of work as you need to go. So let's make a point here. So I'm gonna angle it. So instead of cutting down on it like this, I'm gonna angle the wood. Like so. Cool, it doesn't take much. Just use the weight of the ax to do the job. As you see, making points there. Yeah, okay. So say I wanted to split this wood up too. Let's chop this wood. So I'm gonna come down at angles. As you can see, I started it here. So come down. This would be, this is good for putting a wedge into a tree. If you're gonna chop a tree down with your ax. See, I'm halfway through there, so uh, you, you get your gist of it. So if I kept doing that, it was a tree, I'd be able to fell the tree that, like that. Of course, keeping your body out of the way. I'll see if I can find a tree to demonstrate that on afterwards. So that's a couple of axe skills using your smaller forest axe. And that applies to any of the, any of the axes out there. You know, you've got your Grand Fours, Husqvarna, any axes which are smaller in length, those techniques can be used for that. So, hopefully, that was helpful for you. Moving on, this is another method of using your axe. Just simply put it into a piece of wood, like so. And then you can step over the top and you can use it, use it to make feather sticks again. Same thing, or you can use it to get off some nice tinder strips. This is actually a safer way of doing it. And less, less work, less taxing. And of course, in a survival situation, you, want to, you don't want to expend as many calories. So, yeah, there you go, that's it, that's that one. All right, let's show you how we're gonna fell this little dead standing tree here. You can see she's completely dead. The bark is off. I got my sheath off my axe. Make sure the area is clear. My landing zone is gonna be this way. As you can see, she's leaning towards this direction. So what I'm gonna do, I'm a lefty, so I'm gonna stand to the left. Make sure my body is out of the way of the swing. So look, even if I did overshoot, it's not going anywhere. It's not going into my body. So all I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna hit straight like that. I'm coming in at angles. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do two swings coming down. And then I'm going to do two strings coming up. Keeping your head don't out of the way. You do not want to be standing over like this when you're swinging, just in case it pings up into your forehead. You want to be well out of the way. Keep all limbs out of the danger so, zone. As you can see, uh, two hits. Oops, two hits. And then moving up. Uh, and back down again. Keep that wedge. She may go any minute. Duncan, come. 
uh, dogs with me, so we make sure they stay out of the way. <laughs> oh, she's going in. Uh, I can see my axe went in that far then, so she is really not far off. And there she goes. And that's it. So now all I do, I gotta finish this off by tidying this up. Make sure it's cut all the way down the bottom. This will probably just fall over to be honest. I just rotted right out, so. All right, I found this uh, nice big tree that's down here, so I figured this show you the standing up method for chopping. So what I'm gonna do, again, like I said earlier, 360 degree safety check, make sure nobody's around to get cut. Don't swing the axe around like that. Check, 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 nobody's around. Drop wood. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep my feet, my feet just a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. I'm gonna hold grasp my axe at the bottom of the handle. I'm just gonna come up straight down. Okay? Again, like I said, some of the sometimes the axe can have a tendency to ping off. It just depends on, depends how your aim is. And sometimes it can ping off, go in one direction and come down. So just be aware of that. Just keep your shins out of the way. But if as long as you keep your your legs just a little bit wider than the shoulder width apart. You should be good. You're gonna get your range. Okay, got my range. That's my range. And all I'm gonna do now is just swing down to let the axe do the work. There you have it. Go with the grains of the wood too. If you see, because you can see I've got a knot here. See, I've got a knot here. I'm gonna to attempt to split it straight down this way. As you, can see, as you can see here, I see that a lot. <laughs> uh, this method here, you've you've got to basically have a nice flat surface to put your logs on. Otherwise, they're not going to sit straight, and you, they may fall off. They, they may cause uh, may cause your wood to glance off as you're hitting it. So, nice flat surface. So here we go. Straight down. And yeah, we, as you can see, the wood is going with the grain, as you you can see that. So I've got a knot, knot, it's just working with that knot. And now as you as you look at this, as I come down, Duncan away, away, away please buddy. Hey, what's this? What's this? Go, 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 go. <laughs> this boy's so stubborn. Come on, let's go, let's go, go play. So, this is a tomahawk. Let's see how she splits. Let me move to the left a little bit this time. I had it in the centre last time, so it was sending my chops off. <coughs> well, split pretty good, actually. That's actually surprising. Split, <laughs> split that better than the axe. Obviously, my aim was off on the axe. So, yeah, put, it, put a little more to the left this time. Yeah, as you, I've modified this one a little bit. This is the, the same one. You'll, you'll see the information on it on my blog, too. I uh, changed the spike to a, a hammer and I rounded off the chopping edge, too. But yeah, this is spinning actually <laughs> surprisingly well. I think it's just my, my aim might be a little bit better with this one. Yeah, lovely. So you see, this is good, still good for good, good tasks, but. <sighs> There's a, there is a limit, there is a limit to this one. Making some nice firewood here. So, as with the bigger axe, this is good for making, for making your feather sticks too. Although this may need a sharpen. As you can see there, yeah, she needs a bit of, she needs a sharpen, she does. 
So there's the feather sticks and it's good for good for carving out stuff too. So same same with the bigger axe, you're gonna angle your work. Angle your work where you want it. And it's all over the chopping. Yeah, see it doesn't it doesn't chop as good as the bigger axe, but she's going. Now I wouldn't want to be chopping down trees with this thing. So that's the uh, the little S-wing there. Another method of spinning wood with the tomahawk. Get a piece. It's by the holding method. So this one's a bit. This one's cheating. It's already got a split in it. So what I do with this method. So I'm going to line line up my tomahawk with the edge of the wood there. I'm going to hold it with both hands. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the wood and the tomahawk up and strike it down on the chopping log. This is thicker wood, so she's taking a little bit more. See, she's cracked. Move it down a little bit. Oh, again. <laughs> oh, watch out for people and doggies. There you go, she's split. So I can keep doing that to keep splitting my wood. Good thing about the S-wing axe, I don't need to worry about the shaft. So the shaft splits the wood sometimes too. Uh, there you go. So let's keep going with that. Do one more piece, and that'll be us. Oh, some nasty shot going through that. This is harder wood too. Final chopper I want to play with was my uh, NE number six. Now I designed this to be a bit of a chopper too. So let's just show her off a little bit. So. We're going to put, of course, I'm not going to split anything big like that last, the last time I walked one, but we're going to do some smaller stuff because she's just a knife. So let's see what she does. So I made the handle along, I grasp it backwards. Same method as I showed you earlier with Tamahawk and the, the axe. Just coming down on the edge, send the shot way through, and there you go. That's a uh, wood being split. Let's do some of this stuff. Some of the bigger, if you want to do bigger stuff, um, what we got here to play with? Not a lot. So, say I want to do this log. It's a bit of a beast, and it's sort of cut at a really bad angle. How would I do this? Okay, you've seen the battening videos, I showed you those before. This is the knife. That's about as big as this would get. So, that's the chopping. Again, you know how to use the knife, I've done, I'll be doing knife skills eventually, showing that off, so I just figured I'm doing choppy stuff today. Oh. So this is my latest acquisition. This is the Cold Steel Space Knife Shovel. Oh, I'm looking forward to playing with this. This is the shovel I'm gonna be taking out with me on my weekend uh, alone in the wilderness with just this and the clothes on my back to survive. So it's gonna be fun. Let's just show you a little bit about it. I don't wanna do too much. Just giving you a little teaser. So let's put a spike on the other end of this uh, stick. See what she can do. I've not used it yet, so this is a first for me. It's 
Straight out of the box, she's razor sharp. Good thrower too, by all accounts. That just made short work of that. Wicked bit of kit. Makes a cool ping whenever you hit something, too. That's just good. As with any tool, you want to respect it and make sure you're safe, especially carrying it around. So, if you carry an axe around, do not carry it without the sheath. Do not carry it by the end of the handle, like so, especially if you haven't got the sheath on it. Also, once you've got the sheath on, Try carry it choked up like this. A couple of reasons are, you're not going to swing it into your knees and into yourself, you're not going to swing it into anybody else, and also it makes it nice and easy to run through the woods with it, so, as you can see. I'm not swinging it into my leg, I'm not catching on anything, I'm going to lose it. There you have it. This is uh, Nick, Duncan and Lily from Raw Skills Bushcraft Survival Adventures today. Thank you for joining me. And uh, as always, please like, share and subscribe. Uh, I'm try I want to really want to hit a thousand views because I want to be able to start getting a bit more uh, functionality out of YouTube. Also, check out my Patreon page as that will really help me out too. I got some cool little rewards on there for you if you can help me help me fund uh, my escapades, my adventures, so I could keep bringing them to you and entertaining you guys and teaching you guys. That's the main thing for me, is teaching you guys to be safe and have a great time in the woods. Uh, what else? Also, yeah, keep a lookout. We are, I have a lot more, a lot more footage to come. So, thanks very much and stay safe out there.